Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live report of China's Xinhua News Agency. I'm your reporter, Zhou Guangping. Today, we are in Shenzhen city of South China's Guangdong province. And I'm going to take you to a tour inside this building behind us, which is the new site of China National Gene Bank. China National Gene Bank, known as CNGB, is the only gene bank that is approved and sponsored by the Chinese government. It was established in 2011 by Shenzhen-based BGI, one of the world's leading genomics organizations. And uh, uh, in order to better preserve the precious biosamples and genetic resources, uh, this new building has been constructed and put into use in September uh, the last year. You may ask, what exactly is a gene bank? It's a simple question, but hard to answer. Uh, you may think that the gene bank is a place that stores genetic resources, but actually CNGB has uh, a lot more uh, comprehensive and complicated functions than that. So we will leave this question for a while and answer it later. Now let's go in together. Uh, we are very happy to invite an expert to join our report. Uh, let's welcome Dr. Liu Xin. Dr. Liu, hello. So, uh, first of all, uh, welcome to China National Gym Bank. Um, he, uh, Dr. Liu Xin is the uh, expert of uh, genetic studies and the deputy director of BGI Research. He will be our guide today. Okay, so first of all, of course, welcome to China National Gym Bank. And um, first of all, um, you probably are looking at this uh, mammoth here. Um, so um, you probably are wondering about why we are having this kind of model of a, a, a mammoth here. So it's just like the essential of why we would like to set up China National Gym Bank. What is China National Gym Bank for? So mammoth is this kind of animal that uh, extinct uh, about 10,000 years ago. Uh, but by accident, there are some of the remnants uh, preserved there in Siberia in very cold condition. So uh, right now, the scientists can go there to find some of the tissues that preserve in relatively good condition. And they can get those tissues out there and uh, today, people are trying to use those kind of tissues to try to make the animal live again. So um, the biotechnology uh, uh, right now can achieve that kind of goal. So we say that mammoths is this kind of example that uh, by accident there are some tissues preserved and right now we can use those kind of preserved uh, uh, tissues. But for China National Gymnasium, Definitely, we would like to do that on purpose. So for China National Gym Bank, we would like to preserve all these different stems that might be valuable for later use. So this is why, first of all, we set up a mammoth model here, try to explain what the China National Gym Bank aimed at. So uh, Dr. Liu, uh, now we seem to have a bit understanding of what uh, gen genetic studies uh, really is. But people don't really have a general picture of what exactly is a gene bank. So can you tell us, uh, is it like a database? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a very uh, 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 rough understanding of that. Definitely, that's right, a database. But in addition to database, we call the China National Gene Bank. We, uh, currently, we have three uh, different repositories and two platforms. One of it is the database. But in addition to the database, we, we, we also have the uh, repository to store all the samples. And also the uh, repository, repository which we can store all the living things, including like seeds. And in addition to those repositories, we got two platforms. Uh, the first of all, which can, uh, which can uh, 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 get the data, the genetic data, mm -hmm. out from those samples. And then, after we get the data, after we get some information, some knowledge out of the genetic data, we need to do some application. That is a final platform, which called the, the uh, DNA synthesis and editing platform. So we got uh, three repositories, including the uh, sample 
the database and they live in a repository. And we got two platforms, including the um, second one, what you say, the digitalization platform, mm -hmm. as well as the uh, DNA synthesis and uh, and uh, editing platform. So that is the, the basic structure of uh, D uh, China National Gene Bank. So that's three banks and two platforms. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. That's um, that's three banks and the two platforms we have. So uh, we can go upstairs to to see um, the. Uh, first of all, yeah, the, the the different repositories. The first one we would like to see is the uh, is the sample repository, and here we got the other model here, which is the Chinese the sturgeon. sturgeon. Oh. Yeah, sturgeon. So um, uh, uh, comparing to the mammoths, it's not uh, extinct uh, right now, but it's endangered species. So what we would like to do for 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 it is. Um, similar to the mammoths, well, first of all, because it's not extinct yet, so we are trying to get samples. We are trying to get the samples and store here mm -hmm. and try to help the preservation of this the, the, this animal. Yeah. So, uh, if we can get the gene out of something that is extincted, that means maybe someday we can revive it. Definitely, that's the uh, that that's that's what why we would like to set up the China National Gene Bank so uh, we can store all the samples in uh, if we can get the sample. Of course, we can we can store the samples first of all. But if we can get the data, the genetic data, mm -hmm. theoretically, we can finally use those kind of genetic data to to uh, to preserve mm -hmm. all these different living samples mm -hmm. because the technology uh, is always. Developing to towards that kind of uh, direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that will be very promising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is why we would like to set up China National Gym. Mm -hmm. And here we are going upstairs, mm -hmm. and you can see the stair here. Mm -hmm. um, it's in this kind of uh, formation of the DNA structure. Oh. Yeah, the double helix uh, DNA structure. Oh. Okay. So we are going through, just like going through the DNA, um, uh, which is the um, the molecular uh, of the genes. Okay. Yeah, where the genes uh, are. I also noticed that the shape of this building is very special. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, because as you see there, uh, we got this kind of uh, 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 form to be the terraces. Terrace the field. Yeah, right. just like the terraces. Uh -huh. So uh, we published... We, we, we sequenced the, the genome before, uh -huh. the rice genome before. Okay. So for that publication, we mm -hmm. used a, a cover a letter, a, a, a cover image okay. of terraces. And then when we designed the building of uh, China National Gym Bank mm -hmm. back in 2011, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, it, it suddenly comes to us that we can use this kind of uh, terrace uh, to be the form. Mm -hmm. And we think that this is very, very uh, good to, to fit into the, the uh, overall environment. Yeah, so the building, uh, the whole building is like a, uh, a symbol of the <laughs> genetic studies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just like we do uh, those different uh, researches on different species, including rice. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, will, we would like to do the similar kind of things for all these different species mm -hmm. on the Earth. And then now if our camera uh, turn closer, you can see the cafeteria of the uh, China National Gene Bank. This is the rice area, and you can see there are a lot of plant decorations. Uh, it uh, looks very nice. This building is uh, put into use in last year, right? Yeah, so after... Um, they, uh, they, uh, first of all, in two, 2011, mm -hmm. we, uh, we, we, we start to build this uh, China National Gym Bank, and after the construction of uh, five years, mm -hmm. uh, we are right now uh, in this kind of uh, finished the first phase of China National Gym Bank. So um, this is where we are, uh, the mm -hmm. first phase of the China National Gym Bank. Um, so here uh, we... We uh, uh, arrived at the um, sample repository uh, to store all these different uh, biological samples. So if our 
camera turned this way, uh, you can see there are a lot of large refrigerators. Uh, how many are there? How many refrigerators? Uh, more than uh, 50 of that. So uh, we, can, we can go inside to, to have a better look at yes, them. Yes. So uh, basically for the sample storage, mm -hmm. um, they, just like uh, what we've mentioned for the mammoths, mm -hmm. it needs the uh, temperature, I mean uh, the cold temperature, to maintain all these different samples. So basically, uh, simply speaking, uh, uh, for the sample storage, we need to have uh, the temperature to be at relatively lower uh, uh, kind of temperature. So uh, here you can see you can see the uh, digital there. Uh, it's uh, the refri re refrigerator for the uh, minus 80 uh, degrees centigrade. Um, so uh, this is one of the condition for the sample mm -hmm. uh, uh, storage. Uh, in this kind of uh, temperature, under this kind of uh, temperature, we can we can store. The, um, the tissue samples, including like uh, the blood, the blood human sample. blood, yeah, and the, um, the other uh, tissues from the uh, plant and the animal species. We can have all those different samples stored here uh, for relatively uh, long time. Um, in addition to the minus 80, we also have uh, five degrees centigrade uh, for relatively temporary uh, sample storage and then minus 20 for some of the molecules we, we can get from the uh, tissues, uh, the storage of them. And uh, we also have the minus 170 provided by the liquid uh, nitrogen. Mm -hmm. um, so those uh, different uh, uh, temperature can help us store different, categorize different kinds of the, the samples uh, for different purposes, of course. Yeah, we can have a look at uh, the samples we store here. So I have my colleague to, to show you how we usually get our samples. First of all, we got this kind of uh, information sheet uh, on which we can uh, find the information of the samples we can, we can get. And uh, he's right now showing you about how you can get one of the uh, samples stored th there. Um, yeah, that's the, um, yeah, we, we had this kind of code, yeah, tag uh, for, for each of the sample, and we can know the information based on that tag of the sample. Uh, for this one, this is a, a, a blood plasma sample. Yeah, plasma from blood. So for that one box of it, uh, we had uh, 96 samples and uh, for one of the refrigerator probably we can have um, more than uh, more than thousands of the thousands. samples yeah stored there so uh, usually this refrigerator uh, preserve samples of blood or human tissue yeah, um, they, these are different samples to be stored here. Uh, as I've mentioned, uh, we can store the blood for, for human, uh, not just the blood, but for other uh, uh, body fluid, we can store there. Uh, um, and uh, for the plant and the animals, for other species, we can also store the uh, different uh, uh, kind of tissues there. Uh, for relatively long time, that duration should be uh, three to five years, I think, for the for majority of the okay. samples. And I noticed that there are some uh, paper uh, attached yeah, yeah, to the refrigerator. Right. That that's is right. that's, a log. Yeah, that's a log uh, uh, for which the uh, we, we we store and uh, uh, we get the samples out. Mm -hmm. So it's a very uh, high standard that we uh, we, we manage these real samples. How we get real samples and how we can get uh, out of the refriger, uh, refrigerators. Mm -hmm. um, so this is also very important because, uh, as we've mentioned, for, for mammals, uh, it's just by accident. Uh, people right now might find some of the uh, living tissues. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, since we are doing this on purpose, we are preserved for future, we definitely want to make sure that those samples, those uh, uh, tissues maintained here should be 
uh, sh sh should be uh, usable after uh, the uh, uh, pre pre preserve uh, uh, preservance. Okay. So. Um, so uh, now, what's the capacity? Sample capacity in this. Uh, uh, Bio repository. Uh, so currently, we can store more than um, more than ten million of the uh, samples there. And more importantly, not just the the amount of the samples, but we can keep real samples in very good condition. And also, uh, we can trace uh, each of the samples by the system we have there. So they are all traceable. Yeah, that's right. That's very important for the later use. Mm -hmm. So uh, after the samples stored there, um, we then need to think about how we can get uh, a very important information or to see the information we want from those samples. Because store is just one thing. You can see that we can store for the future. But currently, what can we do uh, using real samples? Mm -hmm. So the first thing we can do is to get the genetic information out of that. That means um, for the genetic information, uh, currently people know that um, it's very important. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's the, uh, the, uh, the information that uh, determine all these biological processes, all these uh, phenomena, all, all the biological phenomena, including like um, uh, whether I, I, I how, uh, the, the height uh, mm -hmm. Of myself, maybe whether I'm uh, I'm uh, 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 affected by some diseases or not. Mm -hmm. Those kind of uh, uh, outcome is actually determined by the by the genetic information there. Mm -hmm. So uh, first of all, uh, for um, not just the medical purposes, but also for the uh, ecological pro uh, purposes. So we need to get the genetic information out from those samples. We think those samples are very important, but in order to use them to make the um, better use of them, we need to get the DNA information, the gene information there out of them. So, so that, that's where we are going yeah, now, Yeah, so right? this is uh, where we are going now. So for the for the platform which we can get the genetic information out from those samples we, with just the same. Mm -hmm. um, we got the so-called digitalization, or to say simply sequencing platform here. Uh, we got more than, uh, we got 150 uh, sequencers here, desktop uh, sequencer here, oh. and we had also the other uh, big one uh, here. I, we can introduce you uh, when we go in there. Okay. So our viewer can have an uh, opportunity to get into a sequencing lab. I think that's a rare chance for them. Yeah, Let's yeah. go. Uh, for uh, first, before going to the uh, laboratory, we need to wear the, uh, the specific uh, clothes. Yes. Yeah, you can see that if we want to go to the, the left array, you need to enter several doors and uh, going through very strict, uh, clean procedure. So that's a way to keep uh, the laboratory uh, in under a very good condition, air yeah. condition, yeah. for this machine to work. We also so, set up this very. Uh, uh, sorry. So now. You see that uh, we need to put on uh, the shield clothes. And also, we need to have the uh, shoes bag. So for, for those of you who have just joined our report, we are now currently visiting China National Gene Bank. And here, uh, if you stay tuned with us, you can see how scientists uh, preserve, read, and write the code of life. So please stay. Now uh, we are ready to go in.
you see there is a air shower room, right? So yeah, we need to go through the air shower room in order to make sure that we did not bring other things in there. Okay, so can, we, can I come? Uh, just the individual. <laughs> I, I go first, you come. Okay. <laughs> You see the air uh, passing through the body to uh, clean away the dust. Win. Yeah, so just to keep the uh, lime trees to be, to be clean. So um, this is the first step we, we, we can get. The, these are different steps we can get the genetic information out. That is called sequencing process. So for the first process, we need to get the DNA out from the uh, samples we have there. And then for the DNA, we need to uh, use that uh, platform there. Uh, you can see one of my colleagues is uh, operating the, 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 the platform there. Uh, you can, we, we need to get enough DNA uh, out from the sample. Uh, we need to replicate that um, and uh, to, to make sure we get enough DNA for the downstream uh, processes. And so what is he doing now, right now? Uh, he, he is right, right now adding the samples to the, uh, to the tube, oh. and uh, then the uh, reactions can take there to amplify the DNA, okay. so for us to get enough DNA. So that's the very first step. What, and, what uh, is this lady doing? Yeah, then after we get enough DNA there, we will need to uh, use this uh, machine to, to load the DNA to the sequencing chip. We got the chip there. We load the DNA from the first step there to the chip. And uh, this, for, for this step, uh, we, after finish, we will get the chip, which we can uh, 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 go to the sequencer to, to, to be sequenced. So that is the second step. So then let's go to the final step uh, where the sequences are and we can do the final uh, sequence of what you say to get the, the genetic information out. So Dr. Liu, now we are actually doing the reading process, right? That's right, we, that's we right. Try, we are trying to read the genetic data from those samples. Yeah, uh, so you can see here how we got the sequences um, uh, which we can use to, to read the, uh, the genetic information out. So simply speaking, uh, we can, we can uh, understand the, the process as to to get the information, especially the, um, the, 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 the combination of the A, T, C, and G. So, so, so simply speaking, we, we, uh, the, the genetic information are stored in DNA, and the differences is the uh, combination of the four characters, A, T, C, and G. So finally, the machine can give us the information about the combination, uh, what is the sequential of the uh, uh, A, T, C, and G, the four different bases, we call it, call it bases, or to say the four characters. So this is what the machine do uh, for uh, getting the information, the genetic information. You can see one of my colleagues uh, operating the sequencer here, uh, loading the chip there. What are they loading? Yeah, loading uh, the chip, chip from the, uh, 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 the, uh, the previous step, loading there and uh, them um, are just uh, working. So uh, because this desk desktop uh, sequencer is, um, is uh, relatively very good at the uh, auto automation, so it's, it's a very uh, automated process that uh, um, we load the chip there and then the data can be, can be uh, generated out from there. So uh, you can see the how steps. Long, how long does it need to, to do such a... Uh, so, of course, to generate in different uh, uh, amount of data, that would be different for the uh, TAM, but uh, 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 we can generate around 24 hours, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, uh, as, far as, uh, as fast as 
within 24 hours. Okay. Yeah. So if uh, our camera uh, comes here, you can see there's uh, the yeah, picture. Yeah, this is this, this is the the uh, picture which uh, we or how we detect the the genetic information. So we using the cameras within the sequencer, uh, we can get the signals. The the uh, the, uh, the, the the signals uh, just like the those kind of images, and then uh, from those images we can we we can get the combination of uh, so the the sequences. The data is included in that picture, that black that's and right, the white that's picture. That's right. That's the very raw data from the sequencer. Okay. And we can get the final data uh, using the sequencer. So it's hard to imagine uh, for people like me because it seems very. Uh, just a simple picture, but scientists can read so many. Uh, That's right. So um, many things from it. It's very, really it's, amazing. It's this kind of combination, not just the biological technologies, but also as we've mentioned, you can see the pictures. Of course, you need to do the computing, and mm -hmm. also all those kind of combination of different areas, and we can make the sequencer. And here we got 150 uh, sequencers. In total, we can generate five terabytes of the data per year. Five terabytes, that means 5,000 terabytes of the data. Wow, um, that's really yeah, a big it's, number. <laughs> it's hard to imagine uh, how many of them, but we, for sim simple calculation, we can sequence uh, more than 50,000 individual, uh, uh, the, the human uh, genomes uh, using the platform. Per year, I mean 50,000. If we are using this for the other applications, like uh, the uh, clinical application, we based on the genetic information, we do the prenatal diagnosis. We can do more than uh, 10 uh, million samples, uh, 10, uh, 100 million samples more than. So this uh, sequencer is self-developed by ourselves. That's right. That's right. They, um, they um, very uh, the advantage of that is first of all, it's the um, uh, uh, the uh, the technology that owned by us uh, uh, developed uh, within China, let's say. So um, uh, we got a relatively uh, good, uh, 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 I mean, uh, very good uh, condition of the sequencer currently, comparing to the uh, cutting edge uh, 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 sequencing technologies uh, worldwide. Yeah. And also, this is a desktop uh, sequencer. You can see here, uh, it's uh, installed on the this kind of desk. We also got larger yeah. kind of sequencer. This one is uh, relatively small, small, and this That's one. Right. Yeah, we got a, uh, a big one here. What, what, what is it called? So it's called Revolucity, comparing to the uh, the previous one we call it BJSEC 500. So BJSEC 500 is the desktop uh, sequencer. We can do uh, individual sequencing. Uh, so for one of them, maybe we can do uh, uh, one or two individual uh, sequencing uh, in several days. But for the larger one, if we are going to sequence like uh, for all the population, I mean the uh, entire population in Shenzhen, that's around 200, uh, 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 20 million, I think, 20 million uh, population in Shenzhen. If we are going to sequence all of them, we need to use the bigger one. So it has a uh, higher throughput, and you can see uh, here uh, it's uh, it's highly automated. So uh, for the previous one, you, we had the sample preparation, we had this the uh, DNA loading, and then sequencing. But for this one, yeah, it's all automatic. The sample preparation. Is it loading the chip? That's right. That's right. That's this is a loading process. So you can see here. So by automatic. And also, uh, this kind of uh, big platform, we can do a uh, larger scale of the uh, 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 genetic data generation. Uh, I guess this machine is not very common, right? Not very common. Uh, we think that it's uh, the, um, probably the only one in China and uh, also quite uh, 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 rare to see uh, all over the world. Okay, okay. So we can generate that amount of data here. Um, the other question is that, um, uh, as we've mentioned, five terabytes of the data. That's the raw data. First of all, we need to store the data there, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, to make it usable, we need to analyze the data. We need to deal with those kind of data. That makes, that's really is a challenge uh, for us. 
to deal with that amount of data. So uh, we need to set up a platform which can 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 help us store and also to um, to analyze the data. So now we are going to to the next uh, bank, which is the data bank, right? That's right, the data bank, or to say the database. Database. So the database can help us um, deal with the uh, data generated we can see here, and to make use of the data. <laughs> all these doors. Yeah, we can see that there are so many doors here, and uh, I noticed that the staff members here they have different uh, different card yeah. to open the different doors. And we got so the permit to go through different the, permission, only, right? Yeah, only the, uh, only the people working there in the, uh, in the lab they can go in the lab. So uh, they can only go to their own lab. That's right. Oh, That's so right. the management is very strict. Very why, strict. Why do you need to, to be that way? Um, so uh, just like the, the sample storage, we need to make sure that finally we can, we can use those kind of sample store for years. Mm -hmm. And here we, we need to make sure that the data generated are in good condition. I mean, they are, that's precise. right. Uh, this is science, of course. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure the same are quite accurate. So then we go upstairs to see the um, data database. Mm -hmm. the, or to say the data bank. We got um, very. So the genetic data we extracted from uh, the samples, and then we read the gene information, and then those information will be entered into the database, right? Yeah, so the data generated there uh, from the sequencer will be loaded okay. to the database, and then people can do the analysis there uh, on the data. They can extract the information they, they want from uh, uh, using the database. So uh, you can see here we are arriving at the database. So there um, are rows of rows and rows of computers. Yeah, that's right. So um, basically we need to provide this kind of infrastructure that can store that many data. So first of all we build this kind of uh, devices there. Mm -hmm. So just like the uh, computing center we think it's uh, comparable to even some of the supercomputing center in China. Uh, so it can deal with that amount of data, perabyte uh, level of the uh, uh, data. So currently here, uh, if you remember, we can generate five perabyte uh, genetic data downstairs from the sequencing platform, digitalization platform. And here we can store more than 60 perabyte of the data. So we need to make sure that we, all the data can be stored here, and maybe other people can upload data here. So uh, 60 terabytes, uh, comparing to existing uh, platforms, we think that's um, comparable, at least, to the leading platforms, leading databases uh, all over the world. Yeah. So these computers are running all around the clock. Uh, that's right. We had our colleagues to maintain them to make sure that uh, they, 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 they can run it uh, in the right way in 24 hours. Okay. Actually, uh, we can go in the lab, but the, the, the noise is so loud. so yeah, that uh, because we, we need to make sure that the temperature won't go too high in there. We got this kind of air conditioning mm, with running. Yeah, running and with very high uh, uh, very loud noises. So, and Dr. Liu, I have a question about it. Uh, the platform is uh, open to all the researchers in the world? That's right. So uh, we got the data uh, there stored there, mm -hmm. and then we will make the data uh, available for people to use uh, based on the uh, website. So we website. got this website. Uh, we also call it the database that people can search against the data here. We got that many, uh, 40, more than 40 databases uh, with the information more than 8,000 uh, different species. So people can search against those data here uh, for their purposes. 
They can use either for researches, but also maybe for some kind of application developing purpose.、Uh, can you give us an example of how do they use your information data? Yeah, for, to, example, for their research.、Um, just a very simple example.、Uh, we got the genetic information of、uh, of the fox tail millet there. So we got the gen- genome、uh, information. We call it the ge- genetic information there. Some of the breeders they would like to say what's the difference for their uh, uh, for their stream or to say for their uh, 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 foxtail millet, and they can search in the database to say what's the difference between their ones and our ones. And probably they can develop some kind of way that can accelerate their、uh, breeding process, just like that. Well, very simple. Can、so that's very useful, actually. Yeah, we definitely want to make sure that our data uh, uh, to be to be usable, and also、uh, people can all of the world can use that. This is why we set up the the platform, the uh, 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 the database、uh, kind of platform. So it will be a very good thing for all the researchers or medical workers. Yes, yes.、Um, uh, so this is our fu-、uh, our purpose to share with people.、Uh, first of all, the、uh, all, all the same,、uh, all the platforms of、uh, China National Gene Bank. So we've already seen the database there.、Um, we got,、uh, as we've mentioned, we got three repositories.、Mm-hmm. We, we we've seen two of them. They、okay. sample、uh, repository,、uh, mm-hmm. the、uh, database,、mm-hmm. and the final one is the. Living biobank, we call it the living biobank. So for the living biobank, we store different uh, uh, kind of. We would like to set,、uh, store different kind of living things there.、Um, but uh, uh, today uh, we are just、uh, first of all going to show you about one of it.、Mm-hmm. That's the seed bank. So we see we 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 know that the seed can finally grow.、Mm-hmm. So we call it the living things. So we call the seed bank to be one of the living biobank. We'll go in there, but in addition to the seed biobank,、uh, the living biobank can also uh, 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 include other parts.、Mm-hmm. Uh, all the living things, including plants and animals,、mm-hmm. will be preserved、uh, in better condition. And more importantly,、um, all the living things will have the Uh, we'll、uh, we'll have the genetic data、mm-hmm. using the uh, uh, platforms of the China National Gene Bank, so that makes the uh, pre pre uh, pr- preserve uh, to be more effective.、Okay. So this is、uh, about the living. But we do not have enough space here to to have all these living plant and animals.、Mm-hmm. So we collaborate with、uh, botanical gardens with the、uh, rooms. Uh, uh, together we make the living biobank,、uh, but here we can see one of it. That's the seed bank we have. So, for those of you who has just joined our report, we are now currently visiting China National Gene Bank, and now our next stop will be the very cold,、uh, very very exciting seed bank. <laughs> Please stay tuned. Okay, we.、Uh, Also, after long walking, <laughs>、um, we are approaching the seed bank. I see there are lots of labs and、uh, different、uh, storerooms in this building. Yeah, that's right. That's why we can store more than、um, more than ten million samples here. Yeah. So first of all, we can see、uh, one of the.、Uh, Uh, they, they, they monitor uh, for the uh, temperature. So for different rooms, we got different、uh, temperatures in order to really make sure that the seed can be well stored there. So first、uh, room we'll go in is this one, right? That's、so、that's pre- right. Prepare preparation room, and then、uh, will be this one. This one is for drying.、Uh, drying room. Drying room. And finally, that's the seed bank. So this is just like the process. We we get the seed. First of all, we go in here, and then we need to make it uh, uh, to be to 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 be dry enough.、Mm-hmm. And after that, we store the seeds in the uh, seed uh, uh, in the final seed bag. It will be very cold there, so yeah, probably we need to. Temperature is minus eighteen Celsius. Yeah, we need to wear the the coat. <laughs> we need the challenge. 
Now uh, we are going to put on clothes and the uh, shoes back. Also need to put on gloves. It's really a street procedure to get in every every repository. Wow. <laughs> uh, wow, this this place is really cold. Mm. Yeah, this is the first room we are uh, dealing with the seeds of the first of the seed will will come here to this room, and then we will uh, go to the next room for the drying of the uh, the, the the seeds. So this we got some of the seeds here to be drying here. You can see, yeah. Uh, um, uh, so before the seed go to the, the the seed bank, we need to make sure that it's it's dry enough. So these are some of the uh, the seeds we collected in this kind of process to be go to go to the seed bank. We got some of them to be very. Uh, There's some rare seeds that we seldom have uh, otherwise. Yeah, we collected the uh, seeds, uh, I mean, globally, worldwide. Uh, so for some of them, uh, some of it is from the Hainan province. Yeah, this is the, uh, the, the seed uh, of one of the plants from the Hainan province in China. So it's, uh, it can be, it's, it's, it's quite unique. Uh, and it can be used not just for wood, but also for the medical kind of purposes. So as a Chinese traditional medicine. We also got some vegetables from uh, Africa. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the seed uh, from uh, uh, one of the local vegetables from uh, Africa. So uh, it's very, in, in, uh, it can provide a good enough uh, nutri nutrient for local people. Is, is this seed um, plantable? Of course. Um, so as you can see, uh, the, we are dealing with the, the seed here to make sure that you, it can be stored for long term. And after long term of the storage, we can get them out and uh, to make sure that it can be, can be planted. Okay. Uh, this one is yeah. the drying room. Yeah. And before we enter the seed storage room, uh, can I put on a coat? Yeah, we need the coat. Uh, it's really, really freezing here. And uh, the viewers, uh, we can look at the board outside. It's minus 18 degrees Celsius. Wow. What's the temperature here? I think it's like... Uh, it's um, 10 or so, maybe. 10. Can you hold it for me? Wow. Okay. This is the so, seed bank. Yeah, finally uh, we come to the seed bank. So after the seed are drying enough, we uh, will put them here in the, in the seed bank. Uh, in this kind of containers. So this, let's just open one of it. Open this one of that, okay. So you can see uh, they are stored in this kind of uh, uh, paper bank. It's called uh, uh, also, yin yin, coin. Yeah, coin. Uh, and we also got the, the unique tank, tag for it. So we can know uh, each of the uh, collection of the, the seed, uh, and then we can search for that, and we can, we can find them effectively. Okay. Them. Uh, if our camera turn closer, we can see that this one is stored. Uh, mm, just recently. Just recently. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it should be recently, but some of the it's it's one of the uh, breeding uh, 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 seed of the of maize. 
Okay. So, uh, how many samples? How many seed? So uh, till now, um, I, uh, we got around eight thousand different seeds stored here, but uh, um, uh, I mean from uh, eight hundred different kind of species. Mm -hmm. But here, uh, for the storage, we can store. We had the cap capability of storing more than fifty thousand of the samples, fifty to sixty thousand of the uh, uh, seed uh, here. So still, we need to collect more of them. Uh, so the CNGB is trying to build a China's Noah Ark. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So um, at Thank least you. we would like to uh, store all this useful information, useful stems there. Uh, seed is one of that. So when we go out, uh, my glasses uh, turn misty. <laughs> so you know how cold is it inside. Very cold. Very, very cold. Oh. Okay, uh, the seed bank is just a part of the living, uh, living uh, bio bank. Um, just a part of that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so okay. The glasses became very misty. So then uh, we had all the same stored there. We had all the data there to be ready. Then one of the questions would be how we can apply, how we can finally apply that. Just like I, we, we've uh, come, we, we, we can, uh, uh, I can explain to you uh, about one of the examples, like uh, people trying to compare the uh, patient to the normal people uh, about some diseases. Uh, let me just use uh, type 2 diabetes as one example. So you can compare the differences, you can find the differences. Uh, first of all, you, you get the samples of uh, these uh, people, and then you get the genetic data there, and then you store the data in the database, and you analyze the data. Finally, you can find the difference, right? You can find the difference, but uh, it's very important for us to know, after finding the differences, what can we do? This is finally the platform of, uh, of, gym, uh, uh, of DNA synthesis and gene editing can help us. It can help us try to know better about uh, how we can apply the information, uh, apply the knowledge we get from the genetic information there. It's like when you find the code of life, you need to rewrite it in order to maybe make some changes. Yes, that's right. We got... Uh, my colleague, uh, Gu Yin, so, to uh, we have, explain, tell us about that, right? uh, We have another guest here to join our live report. Uh, let's welcome Dr. Gu Yin. Uh, she is the uh, senior R&D manager of the synthesis and editing platform of mm -hmm. CNGB. And uh, Dr. Gu, um, I know that the synthesis and editing platform mm -hmm. is also called the writing platform. Yes. So um, why do you need a writing platform? And what actually do you write? Um, for the writing platform, I think people all understand that reading is very important. Like using the sequencing technology, we can read the genome information. But based on the information, what we can do to, to improve our lives and to um, help breeding more uh, species. Mm -hmm. So the genome writing is like you can synthesize and modify the basis in the genome so we can create more things. Mm -hmm. um, for the uh, targets of our writing platform, mm -hmm. we have a demonstration. Mm -hmm. For example, the East chromosome. The so International Synthetic East Genome Project um, we joined this project and our group synthesized three chromosomes of East. Oh. And together with other people in the big international group, we generate the first artificial eukaryotic organism in the world. So by synthesizing and by editing, you can create artificial organisms. Besides this East chromosome project, we are also doing some other projects. For example, we developed the uh, genome synthesis mm. technologies. We can make big DNA fragments, and in that, we can use uh, synthetic biology and editing together to uh, do some 
modification in the genome and to make better species. For example, you can see there are a lot of trees and flowers. Mm -hmm. Using the genome synthesis and editing technology, we can change the colors in the future. And also, we can put fragments which generate the smells into plants which do not have that smells. So we can make these uh, leaves smells like roses wow. in the future. Yeah. So, so this is like uh, what we can do with the writing. So can we achieve it now with the, uh, the, the current uh, technology to turn something not, not smell uh, very good, uh, but to smell frequently? Um, Actually, we now have developed some uh, pipelines to do the genome editing in plants and animals. Mm -hmm. And we are also studying how to combine these uh, genes which regulate the smell okay. together and put them into the plants to make the smell better or change the colors. Yeah. We have the technology, but we still need to do more research okay. to achieve that. Yeah. Uh, so in my understanding mm -hmm. that the reading process mm -hmm. uh, enhances people's understanding of the biological resources, mm -hmm. but the writing process mm -hmm. uh, is another uh, higher process that mm -hmm. you can uh, maybe change, make changes yes. and uh, uh, maybe to uh, rewrite the code of yeah. life. Yes. For example, the reading is like you read a book. Mm -hmm. and you understand what the story telling you. Mm -hmm. For the writing platform, it's like you write based on what you learn and what you r want to express. So with that and together with the information we get from the reading part, mm -hmm. we can modify the species based on our purpose. For example, we can use that in uh, medicine to help the disease diagnosis and to help understanding the disease mechanism. We can also use this in plants and animals to generate, to breed more uh, species mm -hmm. for the application, for example, agriculture. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's really great. And uh, thanks very much for your explanation. Okay. Yes. And uh, now uh, we are going to maybe uh, uh, to the last part of our tour. And uh, Dr. Liu, uh, maybe can you tell us uh, more about the status of CNGB now in the world? Uh, okay, so um, as we've mentioned, uh, they, uh, as you've seen there, uh, we got a different platform there. So it's this kind of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, combinational kind of uh, repositories. So previously, there are uh, like the sample storage, um, the uh, seed bank, and also the databases. But uh, I think uh, it's one of the first to, to, to combine all of them together uh, to, to make this kind of uh, uh, complex uh, of the uh, platform, of the uh, 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 applying the, the uh, genetic uh, kind of resources, combining all the gen genetic re resources together. Mm -hmm. But if we are comparing each of them, uh, for example, uh, let's use the database for, for one example. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, there are the biological uh, kind of uh, databases uh, in the world, including uh, in Europe, there, there's the uh, European um, Bioinformatics Center, uh, EBI. In, uh, the, uh, in the US, uh, there's the uh, National uh, Bioinformatics Center, which is uh, uh, NCBI. So uh, they have uh, been there for years, and the storage, the data storage is around uh, 60 uh, terabytes. Comparing, it's comparable to what we have for now. Mm -hmm. So uh, just a very similar kind of amount. So uh, we think that. Um, we are achieving to the uh, very high standard of the leading uh, bio uh, repositories. Yeah, that's right. Um, but we think that uh, using the genetic information to using this kind of uh, open platform of China National Gene Bank, we can make the, all the resources we, we can have to be more usable uh, and also to, to accelerate the uh, process, the, the understanding of the life, and also the process of application of the genetic information there. And uh, do we have a um, program that cooperated with other institutes? Yeah, of course. Um, we got this kind of platform. Uh, and the idea is that based on this kind of platform, 
different people can 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 do things together. They can contribute to each part of that. They can apply the platforms to to their own purposes, like the studies, the the, the industries. So uh, we are collaborating worldwide with all these different uh, many different uh, organizations, including the food and agriculture um, uh, organization. Uh, uh, under UN and also the CG uh, IAR, uh, those kind of international uh, institutes. In addition to that, we can, we are also co collaborating with um, uh, uh, the uh, domestic uh, institutions uh, in China. Mm -hmm. So um, we think that uh, by collaboration, it's uh, it's the only way that we can make use of the platform we have for now. We can store that many of the samples. We can generate that many that much of the uh, genetic data. But how we can do that? We need to do the collaboration. Otherwise, we won't generate that. Uh, we won't make the uh, best use of the platform here. Yeah. So, uh, do we have a future uh, target for future plan for our CNGB? Yeah, so uh, simply speaking, uh, we are aiming at setting up, uh, just like we've, uh, I, I've mentioned, setting up this kind of platform that uh, uh, people from all over the world can, can use. They can, they can do the uh, uh, application together. They can generate the data together. They can use the platform, and then finally they can share all the information, all the uh, output from this kind of uh, platform there. So this is the overall goal for... Uh, for China National Gene Bank, and we think that uh, by doing this, by doing the sharing, the, the, the data generation, the sharing, uh, uh, and also uh, operated by all the all these people, mm -hmm. so we can achieve that. Finally, we can make better use of the uh, re bio biological resources. We can do better kind of pre uh, preservation of those uh, biological. Uh, kind of uh, uh, species, all these species on the uh, on the earth. So to make it short, we think that we are aiming at making a better earth using the biological, or to say, the genetic information. Okay, uh, now we are on top of the building of China National Gene Bank. You can see that this surrounding is really beautiful. In front of us, there is a sea, and uh, there are hills surrounding the, the building. Uh, in the future, we are aiming at uh, promoting uh, uh, resources uh, 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 in, global, uh, in global diversity, and also we, we need to, uh, we aim to promote the better life. And uh, today, our life report came to an end, and I hope you've learned a lot from our brilliant uh, project of CNGB. And uh, thank you, um, Dr. Liu, for joining us, and thank you for watching. Uh, see you next time. Thank you.